When I say the word books, what does it make you think of? Fall, hot chocolate, and a picturesque view out the window? Or do you think homework, mandatory reading, and complicated Shakespearean language? If you would have asked me a few years back, I guarantee you would have found me identifying with the second option. This was because my early years of childhood consisted of my grandparents, my parents, my teachers, my aunts, my uncles, pressuring classics such as Tom Sawyer's Adventures or The Book Thief upon me. Don't get me wrong, I'm sure they're very good books, but at the time being, when keeping in mind I was five or six, they never appealed to me. First of all, the sources of recommendation, which, like I said, were my parents or my grandparents, didn't persuade me nor motivate me to pick up a book. And second of all, the comments surrounding reading, such as, it's the only way to become clever, or anything you do other than reading is a waste of time, stirred feelings of rejection and resistance within me. They made me feel like anything I wanted to do, such as watch cartoons or go to the park, was all pushed aside for this one activity, reading. Such a negative perception and perspective I developed in my early childhood persevered my entire, my entire life until a change finally happened in 2021. I was scrolling on my TikTok For You page, which, for those who don't know, is a page on TikTok curated based on your interest by TikTok's algorithm. So, obviously, it's a page based on, based on my interest. So picture me scrolling and scrolling and scrolling, and scrolling, and scrolling, digging a little deeper, scrolling, until I came across a book review. The TikTok video featured a redhead girl, around my age or older, who began talking about the latest novel she picked up and simply could not put down. The combination of the girl, who looked like someone I could easily befriend in real life, alongside the entertainment app I was watching this video on, had me hook. This jump-started my journey of loving books. I started by picking up the exact book that I recommended, Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Then, to my absolute shock, because I liked it, I picked up a second book by Taylor Jenkins Reid, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Once again, to my absolute shock and horror, I loved this book so much, it made me want to read more books like them. I went from reading 25 books the year I watched the video on in 2021 to 50 books in 2022, all the way to reading 65 books last year in 2023. I went from looking at reading as a mundane, tedious activity to one that I could use for my own self-care and self-enjoyment. Circling back to social media, raise your hand if you've heard of TikTok, Instagram, or YouTube. Yeah, I was expecting that. Now a challenge. Raise your hand if you've heard of BookTok, Bookstagram, or BookTube. Not so smart now. Essentially, if you combine the words books and TikTok, or books and Instagram, or, you guessed it, books and YouTube, you did get the big three. BookTok, Bookstagram, and BookTube. What these mean is far beyond what their name is able to capsulate. Because going above the usual lifestyle, fashion, cooking, fitness, content you may usually see on social media, these social media communities focus on recommending and reviewing books. Since starting out, these social media hotspots have emerged thousands of new authors, have led to more than 100 best-selling novels, and most importantly, have led to a vibrant community of passionate readers. What's so special about BookTok is it's led by young individuals who mirror their target audience's physical aspect, but also psychological development. Think of it, it's quite logical. When someone who looks like you, talks like you, dresses like you, walks like you, says something positive about an activity, you are more likely to condemn their words as a fact. I don't know about you, 
by my 65-year-old grandpa, talking about the good old days reading fancy French authors with impossible titles, tiny, tiny text, and dark, sombrous covers, didn't persuade me as a five-year-old. Instead, when I opened my favorite entertainment app, TikTok, and gazed at these individuals who passionately talked about reading, something finally clicked. And I picked up my first book. I mean, you and I both know it wasn't my first book, or else I would have never gotten accepted into the school we're in. However, it was the first ever book I picked up for myself. Not for my mother, not for my father, not for my seventh grade teacher, not for my aunt, not for my grandfather, for myself. It was a decision that I made and was in full control for the first time ever of a genre, what cover, what author, what size text the book I was reading had. What I'm saying is social media can be a comforting invitation to literature. Another characteristic of social media's impact on reading is that of promotion of books. It is highly endeavored, but also highly criticized, because in its very digital and invisible hand, social media holds the power to make or break an author. Off the top of my head, authors such as Olivia Blake, Holly Jackson, or Colleen Hoover have all risen to fame, mainly due to word-of-mouth promotion conducted by book talk influencers. Think of it like a bandwagon effect. It starts with the influencer reviewing a book, then the follower is giving the book a try. However, from there, it can go one of two ways. The first pathway is the influencer reviews the book, the followers give it a try, they start turning the pages, and they love it. This book was so fast-paced. It felt like I was watching a movie. I need a sequel today. So, obviously, with such positive comments, they go on to telling their friends, their family, their own followers, and the book gets talked about more and more. It becomes a bestseller. The other pathway, however, is a little different, because it starts once again with the influencer reviewing the book. However, this time, the followers start turning the pages, page by page, and this time, they find little quirks of sorts. The main character was quite a sexist, or, yeah, it could have been cut down 200 pages. Or, worst of all, this reminds me of my seventh grade literature book. With such comments surrounding the novel, people won't recommend it to other friends, family, or social media followers. Instead, they'll make videos negatively talking about it, or simply never bring it up ever again leading to neither the book nor the author being heard on social media about again. Now, why talk about this when I can show you a real-life example of this? Let's talk about It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Have any of you heard of it? I'm, I can guarantee, if you ask your friends, family, peers, have you guys heard of It Ends With Us? At least one person will tell you they've heard of it and they've probably read it. This is the book right here. And originally, when it was released in 2016, this book sold 200 copies, which was actually a record and only actually happened twice. However, in 2019, when it was reviewed on BookTok, this book has now reached 20 language translations, 177,000 copies sold yearly, and most importantly, a movie adaptation starring Blake Lively. This book is so widespread and talked about that it has become one of the books you will find even at airport stands in one of those 20 books that they have. I've also brought a little artifact with myself to show you just how much I love this book. This is a picture of me in 2021 on my ski vacation in February. As you can see, I'm holding this exact book that's up there. Except what's interesting about this is my short goldfish attention span is focused on the book and not the cereal. And I want to preface, I am a breakfast connoisseur. I will eat pancakes, waffles, avocado toast, porridge, 
for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Willingly. And so what's interesting is instead of looking at my cereal, tasting the taste of it, the sweetness of it, the crunchiness, I'm instead fully captivated by this novel. At the time being, I was so intrigued by why my friends and my classmates were talking about this book, reading it in class, that I wanted to find out for myself if this book was worth it. And I think we can, both, we can all tell it was worth it, because I annotated everything about this book. However, this is one success story, and it doesn't account for the thousands of authors that have experienced backlash. Once again, looking at Colleen Hoover, this time at the sequel of It Ends With Us, It Starts With Us, what are we expecting? Positive reviews, right? Wrong. In mere weeks of this book coming out, people had three general opinions. It was a money grab, it should have never existed, and worst of all, Colleen Hoover was romanticizing domestic abuse. In mere weeks, people went from praising and honoring even Colleen Hoover's grocery list to throwing this book and the many others written by her in their donation pile. In a time of fast-paced living, where social media grants us fast access and efficient access to information, an author's success becomes a game of lottery, of either fame or disdain. The landscape of reading continues to evolve and change through the power of social media on a daily basis. Just last year, there were 18.1 billion views to the hashtag BookTalk. Like myself, 48% of people find themselves, once they've, once they've entered these communities, reading more now than they did before. The foundation of trust these communities rely on have led to 62% of people picking up and be willing to give up the time of their day to read a book that someone else recommended. The impact also expands to authors, because last year, 20 million copies of books sold were accounted to BookTok. And this one shocked me to my core, but in 2018, when BookTok did not exist, to 2019, when BookTok came to be, there was an 821% increase in sales revenue of books sold in libraries in Canada. 821% in sales revenue. Social media has converted what is thought to be a solitary hobby of reading into a team sport for both authors and readers. It's an evolution unlike any other, and we need to embrace it fully. Change is like a plot twist we didn't see coming, whether it's the rise of social platforms or the promotion of books. Reading is ever-changing in the way that we perceive it and in the way we interact with it. At the time being on BookTok, BookTube, and Bookstagram, there's a high abundance of people my age or slightly older populating it. However, I welcome all of you to give it a try. Search out the hashtag BookTok. Find one book that you somewhat resonate with. Pick it up and you'll see that you will find people who have similar preferences to you, similar author preferences, similar taste in books. And you'll find yourself being emerged in your, into a new community. I'm also highly aware that people often have kept skepticism regarding social media, whether it be the potential polarization of media or the fake media. However, I can guarantee BookTok, Bookstagram, and Booktube are exceptions among social media because the foundation of our love for books makes this community one of pure enjoyment and um, our love for books. Thank you. And let's keep turning those pages, welcoming what the future holds for books.